Just make sure it's still working because last night it cut off on the trap. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Close the doctor's up. It's already being recorded. It's already being recorded. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على أمور الدنيا والدين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد خاتم النبيين وآله وصحبه أجمعين ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم Can the um, sisters open this door? We're beginning now with the 11th hadith of Arba'oon al-Nawawiyya Is the microphone or is the, is the, is the uh, okay I can hear it Also, just as a small reminder, inshallah, yesterday, there was some small participation from the sisters, but we noticed that most of the participation was from only about three or four different sisters. So, alhamdulillah, we're here, especially, you know, if you travel from far, engage, inshallah, because the only way that you're going to accept or learn knowledge is to engage him, and there's nothing wrong with a wrong answer. A wrong answer is an opportunity to be corrected. If we don't allow ourselves to have incorrect answers or incomplete answers or stutter or falter, they will never achieve actual knowledge within that ta'ala. So there's no shyness as well. There's no shyness when it comes to knowledge, inshallah. So be aware of that fact. And when there's questions asked, the sisters have to participate. We don't set up these dorat for the sisters to be, you know, to walk away with nothing. We expect that the sisters walk away with something just as well or more than what we expect the men to walk away with, inshallah. طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحديث الحادي عشر عن أبي محمد الحسن بن علي بن علي بن أبي طالب بن سبت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وريحانته ورضي الله عنهما قال حفظت من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم دع ما يريبك إلى ما لا يريبك رواه الترمذي والنساء وقال الترمذي حديث حسن صحيح on the authority on the page 181 in the English text on the authority of Abu Muhammad al Hassan bin Ali bin Abi Talib, the grandchild of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, from his daughter, and his heart felt, may Allah be pleased with them both, said, I committed to memory from Allah's Messenger, leave that which makes you doubt for that which does not make you doubt. Collected by At-Tirmidhi and an nasai and At-Tirmidhi said, al Hassan Hadith Sahih. No. Alhamdulillah. It's hadith, it's a small hadith, but I want to bring maybe three benefits that I think is very important, and it's important because of the history of Islam and our communities, particularly those communities who claim sunnah, those communities that claim um, the way of the salaf. When I saw it about what I had here, and I was so deeply shot, and I saw the God is so straight path. And mm -hmm. this hadith is collected by, as you heard, Imam Noe collected it, and he put it in his 40 hadith from Imam Tirmidhi. It's also collected by Imam Ahmed, also collected by um, Al Hakim, Imam Hakim, and, and, and others. One of the people in the chain. His nickname is Abu Hawra. Abu Hawra. Write this down. Abu Hawra. And they said that his name is Sa'ad ibn Sinan. Sa'ad ibn 
C9, sod given C9. But there's a discrepancy as it relates to this person because, as they said, uh, Ibn Rajab, he mentioned when he explained this hadith, say, Waqala, Waqala al Akhirun, and others said, he is Rabia ibn Shaybat. So if we look at this point, there's a discrepancy about the person. Some names the people know this person by, and others say, no, this is yani, that person's name. So this led some people to, as they say, to say that he's upright. He's a person who's religious, and he's trustworthy, and he's active. As they say, yani, as a person is thika, that means he's not a liar. It means that person is a person that, if he says the sky is blue, when you look, the sky is blue. If he says the sky is gray, you look, the sky is gray. He's not going to say um, anything but the exact truth. And, and he's upright. He don't know anything from his outward worship except uprightness. So this, Imam Ahmed, because of the discrepancy, he said, Tawakafu, Imam Ahmed. Imam Ahmed didn't make a judgment on him. And normally the scholars of hadith they said if someone stops on that person, that means there's a question mark or there's something that they don't want to get involved in because of discrepancy. And because of this, they said, Then it became some debate and problem between the people because of this narrator. So one of the main points, one of the scholars named Joseph Jani, he said about this person, Abu Hara is a person He's a person who's anonymous and he's not known. This point here is a point that we benefit from the chain of the small hadith because as some of the scholars said, he's thicker. He's a person that is reliable, trustworthy, upright, and you can't be reliable, upright, except somebody knows you. But then you see Imam Ahmed, Imam Ahmed Tawakafu. He stopped, meaning he didn't say against or for that person. Then you had some of the other ulama, they said that this person, like uh, Joseph Jani said, this person is majhul la yu'araf. He is a person who's not known and he's majhul, meaning yani, un, uh, 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 unanonymous or like he didn't exist. So this teaches you that just because some scholars may not know about an individual or some layman may not know about a scholar doesn't mean that all the way across the board this person is not known. As when they talked about Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Farooq, I hope it doesn't mind me mentioning this in, in Sheikh uh, 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 Abu Mahmoud, but people were saying, who is he? You know, uh, um, what's his madhab? You know, where's his knowledge? Who did he come from? Who did he sit with? We don't know him. He's not known. But look at this issue. Yani just because some group of people, even they be scholars, maybe they didn't hear of him, maybe they didn't know him, that doesn't mean that the person is not known at all. Doesn't mean that the person is not known at all. So this is something we benefit from this small hadith because also this enters into the text of the hadith. Da'at ma leave what you doubt. And that's why the Prophet, yani, this hadith is one of the most important hadith that the Prophet mentioned that's so small because it includes the likes of these benefits. And there's some more that I can say about that, but this is the main benefit from this hadith. Allahu ta'ala a'lam. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <clears throat> الحديث الثاني عشر عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من حسن إسلام المرء تركه ما لا يعنيه حديث حسن رواه الترمذي وغيره the twelfth hadith on authority of Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه he said Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said from the perfection of the religion of a man is that he leaves what does not concern him. A Hassan Hadith collected by At-Tirmidhi and others. This Hadith and another wording is collected as the wording of this Hadith says, يعني من حسن إسلام مرعي From the, يعني they translate this a lot of times from the perfection of a person's 
or individuals Islam. But there's also word in husni iman. Naam, husni mada iman, from the perfection of a person's iman. And this is something that it goes hand in hand with the statement of the Prophet and with the Hadith in Sahih Muslim. He said, "Yani al Muslim, al Muslim, al Muslim, al Muslim, al Muslim, al Muslim." Al-Muslim Salam al-Muslimuna min lisani wa yadihi Naam, he said the Muslim and this is talking about the characteristic of the Muslim so this hadith where the Prophet is talking about the perfection or the better part of a Muslim's Islam or the better part of the person's Iman is talking about the characteristic how the person should be as a Muslim and so the Prophet in the other hadith say Muslim he said that the Muslim meaning the characteristic يعني خصال 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 مسلم يعني the 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 characteristic يعني أو صفة مسلم يعني the description of a Muslim أو أو صاف المسلم those things that the Muslim should be known يعني by as characteristics or attributes but من أداب المسلم from the أدب of the Muslim that he makes free the other Muslim from the harm of his hand and his tongue so this goes with this hadith the ulama they mentioned what the Salam said in Husn Islam al Mara'i that the person from the perfection of his or her Islam is that they leave off that which does not concern them. And others say the opposite holds true that a person should be busy, that he should be busy, on the other hand, with things that refer to himself, things that benefit himself. Except if it's enjoining the good, prohibiting the evil, then this is an exception to the rule. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Al-Hadith al-Thalith al-Ashr. An Abi Hamza Anas ibn Malik and radiyallahu anhu khadimin rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anin nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal la yu'minu ahadukum hatta yuhibba li akhihi ma yuhibbu li nafsi. This hadith is on page 192 of the English. Abu Hamza, Anas ibn Malik, the servant of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa said, none of you truly believes unless he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. Collected by Abu Khari and Muslim. This hadith of ulama, they said that the narrator and another wording, he said, uh, <clears throat> as the Prophet said, la yu'minu hadukum hatta yuhibbu l'akhihi. None of you truly believe. And this yani, statement, none of you truly believe, it doesn't mean the person doesn't believe absolutely. But rather it means, as they said, that the person Iman has taken the plunge. The person Iman has taken a uh, decrease because of this action. And so likewise, the Iman of the person takes a rise. The Iman of the person goes up when he wants for his brother. Yushmal yani uqtihi. It also includes his sister, yani, that he wants for them that which he wants for himself. And some ulama, they added, like Imam Nawi, min khair, from the good things, because it's in some narrations the Prophet mentioned, min al khair, from the good things, because you cannot want for the Muslim something bad. Even if you want for yourself something bad, you want to drink, you want to get high, you want to do something bad, so you say, come on, Akhi, let's go kick it. Let's go have a good time. But this would not be from the conditions or the characteristics of being a believer. So here the Prophet mentioned that yani, uh, 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 the believing has to do with wanting for your brother and your sister the good, that what you want for yourself. And also it mentioned a jar, the neighbor, and also in another narration, uh, uh, that he does not harm his neighbor. So these are characteristics of the believer. And some ulama, they said that this means if you do these actions, then your iman lessens and not that you become outside the fold of Islam. Allah musta'an. Al-Hadith al-Rabi Ashr An Ibn Mas'ud an radiyallahu anhu qal qal al-Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la yahillu damu mimri in muslimin illa bi ihda thalatin al-thayyibu al-zani والنفس بالنفس والتارك لدينه المفارق للجماعة رواه رواه البخاري ومسلم. This hadith is on page 195 in the English. 
Hadith 14, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, it is unlawful to take the life of a Muslim except for one of three reasons. The fayyib that commits illicit sexual intercourse. A life for a life, the one who leaves his religion and abandoning the jama'ah. Collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. This hadith, Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Farooq, he mentioned this hadith last week in the dars from the Muslim Imam Khomeini, who's from the Shuyukh and the Ulama of Imam Bukhari. The Sheikh is teaching this class on the internet. He mentioned this hadith. And wallah, he mentioned the benefit that was something that was so profound, but it also showed the difference between an alim and an and 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 army, the difference between a scholar and a layman. This hadith of Salam, he mentioned that it is not permissible to spill the blood of a Muslim. And he meaning the Muslim cannot have his life taken yani, legally, Islamically, except in three cases. And number one, this is talking about when you are in a Muslim society that is um, created and picked and built by the people. People want to be in an Islamic environment. And this also showed you this is a judicial issue. This is not for groups and fanatics and <clears throat> different tribes and like this. No. So the Salam first he mentioned a Thebzani, the one who makes illegal intercourse, we call it adultery. Meaning he's been married, she's been married before, and then they have relations with someone who's not their legal spouse at that time, they become a zania, meaning the punishment for them is stoning. And this happened in the hadith ma is ma, ma, mazin, and also the Prophet Sallam, yani, uh, uh, and another occasion, a lady came to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they mentioned the case that they were involved in the zina. And the Prophet Sallam turned away, yani, yani, because he wanted them to just repent, leave it, you know, don't come to me, because if he tells them they have to then get the punishment by saying uh, that they did this crime. And many ulama, they said, you have to say it four times. I made zina, number one. I made zina, number one. I made zina, and I made zina four times. Just like you should have four witnesses if someone says that you made zina, you have to say it in confession four times. This hadith, the Prophet he mentioned that as the first thing that Allah will hold you accountable if that person is killed because of making adultery in a Muslim country, the punishment is to be stoned to death. To be stoned to death. And this was the injunction from the Jews in the Torah, by the way. And the Tabarak wa ta'ala revealed it to the Prophet And then the second one, the Prophet he mentioned, wa nafsa bin nafs, wa nafsa bin nafs, meaning someone kills another person. And this is not talking about in a country where retribution was um, lawful or retribution was recognized. In some countries you can't do retribution, it's a crime. They make it general. But here Allah is talking about in a situation where you defend yourself, you're not liable. Or if you're the country who is serving a penalty to a person who deserves and has been proven to be guilty of a, a crime that is being sentenced to death, like adultery, then those are examples where you are not blameworthy. And the Sheikh, he mentioned, and the Dawah Sheikh Muhammad, that if a person deems it okay to kill a Muslim, if a person deems that it's okay to kill a Muslim, and he's a Muslim, then that person, because of his denying the prohibition, such as in this case of not being able to kill a Muslim, then the Sheikh, he said, many ulama said that person leaves Islam because he himself believes and has deemed it okay to kill the Muslim where Allah as a judge prohibit you and told you it is wrong to kill a Muslim. And there's some details to that issue, but that's a point that the Sheikh, he made. And then the issue of al-mufariq al-dini, yani ma'da, al-tariq al-dini, al-mufariq al-jama'ah. Uh -huh. The one who abandons his religion. And here, Mufarakul Jama'a means if you leave the religion, then guess what? You disassociate yourself from the Jama'a, meaning the body of the Muslims around the world. 
You're not included in that body of Muslims because you left the religion. But many years ago, if someone left a particular community that was thriving, they say he left the jama'ah. They would use this hadith to say he left the jama'ah. But the meaning here, leaving the jama'ah, means a person, yirtet and deen. He left, he apostated from the religion, which means he also at the same time separated himself from the Muslim body at large. Wallahu mustan, that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salam wa al-afiyah. Ameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Al-Hadith. الخامس عشر عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليكن خيرا أو ليصمت ومن كان ليؤمن ومن كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليكرم جاره ومن كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليكرم ضيفه رواه البخاري ومسلم The English is on page two o one أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه he said Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said whoever believes in Allah on the last day should say that which is good or remain silent. And whoever believes in Allah on the last day should honor his guest. Al-Hadith, Al-Sadis Ashr. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن رجلا قال للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أوصني قال لا تغضب فردد, فردد مرارا قال لا تغضب رواه البخاري The hadith 16 on page 208 where Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه he said that a man said to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم give me some advice he said do not become angry he repeated it several times he said do not become angry recorded by Al-Bukhari Some ulama, they mentioned that this hadith was mentioned in light of Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. <clears throat> As they said from the Catholics of Ibn Umar, kana yani yashtatfil ghadab, he used to become very upset. So some said the man that's not mentioned in this hadith who said, give me advice, O Messenger of Allah, tell me something good, give me a type of admonishment I can work by. The Prophet said, la taqbab. Some said this was mentioned to Ibn Umar. Others mentioned it was mentioned to other companions that had issues with temper. So we understand from the Prophet Sallam, this is one of the ways that a person can be guaranteed yani, the Jannah. Because in another word, he said, jannah. If you control your anger, la taqbab, yani, this is ta fa'il in the, in the word and in Arabic. So it means don't do actions while you're angry. Because God of anger is something Allah has created in the creation, whether it be a human, an animal. But the issue is not to act, not to speak, not to uh, 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 do an action while you're in a state of anger. So here the Prophet in another wording, he said, and you will earn, you will be able to go to the Jannah, which shows you the opposite if a person does not control their anger. If a person acts or talks out of anger, it's possible that that person may lose the opportunity to go to the Jannah. And moreover, they may be somebody who ends up in the fire. So this is a very important hadith that deals with the issue of anger. And it also deals with the issue of mental health as anger is a physical and mental issue. We ask Allah to protect us from acting out of anger. Amen. Amen. الحديث السابع عشر عن أبي يعلى شداد بن عوس رضي الله عنه عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن الله كتب الإحسان على كل شيء فإذا قتلتم فأحسنوا القتلة وإذا ذبحتم فأحسنوا الذبحة وليحد أحدكم شفرته وليرح ذبيحته رواه مسلم The 17th hadith on authority of Abu يعلى شداد بن عوس رضي الله عنه reported that Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he said Allah has preordained kindness over all things. So when you kill, kill properly. And when you slaughter, slaughter properly. You should sharpen Allah's preordained perfection or over all things. So when you kill, kill properly. When you slaughter, slaughter properly. You should sharpen your your razor or your blade and give a sense of ease to what you slaughter. It was a, it was a few um, in the in the translation. This hadith is a hadith that people normally don't pay more, much attention to, but however, if we look at it, 
and there's a clear reputation on what we have been seeing since the death of the person named George Floyd and the many people that have been killed unmercifully at the hands of police here in the United States going all the way back to the 60s and 50s and beyond that. It's a clear reputation against leaders in the Muslim country that torture and <clears throat> kill people and he, un, un, unmercifully and he, because of their power and ability. It's a clear reputation on those who say it's permissible to just kill a person because he's a Jew or a Christian. And we know that the Prophet wasallam, even when it came to defending the life of a Muslim, when it came to warfare, he prohibited the Muslims in the battle from fighting and killing those who are not in the fight. He prohibited those Muslims from killing the elderly, the women, the children, the priests, the rabbi, the goats, the cattle, doing anything harmful to the water or the infrastructure. And all of this is inclusive in the meaning that you find from this great hadith, and that is that you do the best. You try to perfect, you give the most respect and concern to that which you do, all the way to the issue of slaughtering the animal that you're going to eat. Must be mercy involved, because whoever wants the mercy of Allah, then he should show mercy. We ask Allah to make us from those who are merciful and show mercy to us. Amen. Al-Hadith al-Thamin Ashr. عن ابي ذر جندب ابن جناد وابي عبد الرحمن وعاد بن جبل رضي الله عنهما عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال اتق الله حيث ما كنت واتبع السيئه الحسنه تمحوها وخالق الناس بخلق حسن رواه الترمذي وقال حديث حسن وفي بعض النسخ حسن صحيح the 18th hadith on authority of abu dhar Jundub ibn Junada and Abu Abdurrahman Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhuma reported that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said fear Allah wherever you are and follow up a bad deed with a righteous one it will cancel it and relate and deal with the people with noble character interact and deal with the people with noble character this hadith is an example of the <coughs> proficiency and the profoundness of the book of Allah Taala, the Quran and Kareem, and how even if there's some discrepancy in the hadith, such as this hadith has three points of criticism when it comes to the chain being authentic or not, but the meaning is true from the Quran. That Allah Taala command us to fear Him wherever we may be, and to what bit yani say at hasana yani, and to when you do a bad deed, follow it up with a good deed. Not to do a good deed and follow it up with a bad deed. Like Muslims, they pray and then they go, Allahu Musta'an, smoke. Or a Muslim, he pray, then he goes back on the block and he hustles drugs. Allahu Musta'an. It should be the opposite, that you smoke and then you make yani two raka'ah. That you yani sell some drugs and then you make yani tuhajjid and make toba and try to leave that thing. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned it will wipe it away. Meaning that if you do a good deed, the Prophet said that the good deeds are yani, multiplied, yani, asha amthaliha, yani, in another narration, after 10 times, the Prophet said, seba'a mia di'fain, up to 700 times. So imagine you do a good deed. Allah decides to give you 10 reward or 700 versus one bad deed. You only get written down for that bad deed. Versus one thing that's a major sin, you only get written down for that one major sin. So this is the example of how it would wipe away. It will yani, be the majority. It will efface the bad deeds. But this is not a hadith encouraging you to yani, do a bad deed and then follow it up with a good deed, saying that bad deeds are okay to do. No. But it's an acknowledgement of the mercy of Allah wa ta'ala and how Allah, he wants for you ease. He does not desire for you hardship, the ease of obedience, the ease of iman versus the hardship of disobedience and the hardship of that which is disbelief and disobedience, which ends up in the fire. And then the last thing, good character is the most weightiest thing. As the Prophet said, after Nas. That most people will enter the paradise not because of the knowledge they have. Most people will enter the paradise not because of the wealth that they have. Most people will 
into the paradise, not because of the most hajj or the most salat that they have, but because of good character, which is the result of your knowledge. We ask Allah to give us good character. I mean, Al Hadith Tasi Asher. And I mean, I'm a little bit of a Abdullah ibn Abbas and Rodi Allah, who I'm a call. كنت خلف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يوما فقال يا غلام إني أعلمك كلمات احفظ الله يحفظك احفظ الله احفظ الله تجده تجاهك إذا سألت فاسأل الله وإذا استعنت فاستعن بالله وعلم أن الأمة لو اجتمعت على أن, ينفع أن ينفعوك بشيء لم ينفعوك إلا بشيء قد كتبه الله لك وإن استمعوا على أن يضروك بشيء لم يضروك إلا بشيء قد كتبه الله عليك رفعت الأقلام وجفت الصحف رواه الترمذي وقال حديث حسن صحيح وفي رواية غير الترمذي احفظ الله تجده أمامك تعرف إلى الله في الرخاء يعرفك في الشدة واعلم أن ما أخطأك لم يكن ليصيبك وما أصابك لم يكن ليخطئك وأعلم أن النصر مع الصبر وأن الفرج مع الكرب وأن ما وأن مع العسر يسرى. The hadith in English is found on page two eighteen. Abu al-Abbas, Abdullah bin Abbas, radiallahu anhu ma, he said, I was behind the Prophet sallallahu alaihi one day and he said, Oh young boy, I shall teach you some words. Be mindful of Allah and he will protect you. Be mindful of Allah and you will find him in front of you. When you seek a need, seek it from Allah. And when you ask for help, ask it from Allah. You should know that if the entire mankind were to come together to grant you any benefit, they will not be able to benefit you except with what Allah has already written for you. And if they were to come together to cause you any harm, they will not be able to harm you except with what Allah has written for you. The pens have been raised and the pages are dried, collected by a Tirmidhi, who said, it is a Hassan Sahih Hadith. And a version different from that of a Tirmidhi, it reads, Be mindful of Allah, you will find him in front of you. Seek nearness to Allah during good times, and he will know you in times of adversity. You should know that whatever Allah misses you, that, excuse me, you should know that whatever misses you was not meant to reach you, and whatever reaches you was not meant to miss you. You should, nah, you should know also that help comes with perseverance, and that relief comes from distress, and that certainly with difficulty comes ease. عن الحديث العشرون عن أبي مسعود عقبة ابن عمر الأنصاري البدري رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن مما أدرك الناس من كلام النبوة الأولى إذا لم تستحي فاصنع ما شئت رواه البخاري The English explanation is on page 229 The hadith says on authority of Abu Mas'ud عقبة بن عمر الأنصاري from amongst those who fought in the battle of Bedr. No, that's not correct. <coughs> Actually, in the English translation is a mistake. It says that he's from those who, who fought in the battle of Bedr, which is incorrect. He actually was from a person. The reason his name has al Bedri at the end of his name was because he was someone who used to live around the area of al Bedr. And that he did not fight in the battle of Badr, which is the correct opinion of the scholars. Allah Ta'ala A'la. From what the people have, the hadith going back to the translation, it says, On authority of Abu Mas'ud, Uqba bin Amr al-Ansari, from amongst those who fought, excuse me, from among, he was al-Badri. May Allah be pleased with him. He said, Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa he said, From what the people have comprehended of the sayings of the past prophets is, that if you do not feel any sense of shyness, then do what you like. رواه البخاري الحديث الحادي والعشرون عن أبي عمر وقيل أبي عمر سفيان بن عبد الله الثقافي رضي الله عنه قال قلت يا رسول الله قل لي في الإسلام قولا لا أسأل عنه أحد غيرك قال قل آمنت بالله ثم استقم رواه مسلم The 21st hadith on authority of Abu Amr and it was said that his name was Abu Amr سفيان بن عبد الله he said, I said, O oh Allah's Messenger, tell me a word in the religion about which I will not ask anyone but you. He says, Say, I believe in Allah, and then be steadfast. Collected by Muslim. Al Hadith al Thani wal Ashroon, An Abi Abdullah, Jabir ibn Abdullah al Ansari, Rodi Allahu anhu ma, and the Rodulan Sa'ala Rasulullah, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a fakal, 
أرأيت إذا صلي أرأيت إذا صليت المكتوبات وصمت رمضان وأحللت الحلال وحرمت الحرام ولم أزد على ذلك الشيء أأدخل الجنة قال نعم رواه مسلم ومعنى حرمت الحرام اجتنبته ومعنى أحللت الحلال فعلته معتقدا حله والله أعلم the twenty second hadith On page 236, Abu Abdullah Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari radiallahu anhu ma, he said, a man asked Allah's messenger saying, tell me, O messenger of Allah, if I observe the obligatory prayers, fast in the month of Ramadan, and I consider the lawful to be lawful and the unlawful as being unlawful, but I do not, and I don't add anything else to that, will I enter the paradise? He said, yes. Then he said, by Allah, I will not add anything to that, collected by Muslim. The meaning of I consider the unlawful as unlawful means I stay away from the haram. And the meaning of I consider the lawful as lawful, I act on it believing it to be permissible. Al Hadith Al Thalif Al Ishroon An Abi Malik Al Harith ibn Asim Al Ashari Yiradi Allahu Anhu Kal Kal Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam الطهور شطر الإيمان والحمد لله تملأ الميزان وسبحان الله والحمد لله تملان أو تملأ ما بين السماوات والأرض والصلاة نور والصدقة برهان والصبر ضياء والقرآن حجة لك أو عليك كل الناس يغدو فبائع نفسه معتقها أو موبقها رواه مسلم The twenty third hadith is found on page two thirty nine in the English. Abu Malik al-Hadith bin Asim al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu he said Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said cleanliness is half of iman and the saying alhamdulillah meaning all praises for Allah fills up the scale the saying subhanallah meaning how far removed is Allah from any imperfection both fills or fills up that which is between the heavens and the earth the prayer is light and charity is an evidence of true iman perseverance is light in the Quran as a plea for you or against you. Each of the people sets forth in the morning entrusting himself. He either ransom it or ransoms himself or puts it into destruction. He either frees himself or puts it into destruction. Ulama, they mentioned this hadith in their books such as Ibn Rajab. <clears throat> and Hanbali, who explained the 50 hadith, he added eight hadith to Imam al Nawi's 42 hadith. In this explanation, they mentioned <clears throat> many benefits, the scholars mentioned many benefits from the companions, Tabi'in, third generation by Tabi'in. From amongst them, they said, A Tuhur, Shatwal Iman. Some people said the Tuhur here is talking about the cleaning yourself inwardly because you have a tahara to qalb or what the harvest to jesed you need cleaning the heart from shirk cleaning the heart from disbelief cleaning the heart from disobedience and how do you do that you correct the belief of shirk with belief and allah tabaraka wa ta'ala you correct the belief of <coughs> uh, disbelief with the belief of iman you correct the sins that you long to do and you want to do in the heart by wanting and longing to do good deeds. So some scholars have said this hadith is talking about cleaning the heart. That's why the Prophet here they said he mentioned to whore shatr al-iman. It's a part of iman, meaning to want to clean and rid yourself from the likes of shirk, disbelief, and disobedience. But most scholars said to whore here is talking about ablution, wudu. And that the issue, the word Iman, Allah Azzawajal mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allahu imanakum, that Allah would not allow or cause your Iman to be lost. And he was talking about people that was praying towards Bayt al maqdis before the obligation of turning towards Mecca. So Allah called Salah Iman. In the Quran, thus the Prophet is talking about Iman here. In that context, the scholar said it means a salah. And then al tabaraku wa ta'ali mentioned the issue of yani madha al-tasbih, to say subhanallah, and to say alhamdulillah. And they said, this, the, the, the narrator, he said, tamla'u or tamla'ani. 
the, the, the narrator mentioned it's either this word, and they both carry the same meaning, meaning plurality. Tembla'u, yani it feels, yani plurality, or tembla'ani feels, yani the, yani two, which some scholars said two in the Arabic means plurality. Some says three, some says two. The point is here, the narrator didn't want to lie on the prophet. He didn't want to say something that was not true. So he said it's either this word, Tamla'u or Tamla'ani, which they carry the same meaning. But the point is, he did not want to say a single letter or word wrong on the prophet. And then the Prophet Sallam, he mentioned a salah to Nur, that your salah is Nur. And this is true. When you see a person, you say, wow, that person, you can see the Nur on his face, meaning a spiritual light, a physical light, a light that shows that person is praying. That person understands the prayer. That person is benefiting from the prayer. And also, that person can look the opposite. If a person is not benefiting from their prayer, if a person is not praying at all, that person, you can look at him and say, wow, I don't see any lure. I don't see any spiritual light. He looks very depressed. He looks very gloomy. He looks very sad. So the Salat, the Prophet said, the nur, yani spiritual and physical. And then he mentioned was sadaqatu al burhanu a sadaqa from the word siddiq truthfulness from the word truthfulness siddiq came sadaqa to show your truthfulness and belief you give your money to show how much you really have siddiq with Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala the tasdiqihi by believing in him and what he promised you give sadaqa you give from your money so they have the same context word root and they have different yani meanings and different contexts but they're relevant to one thing how truthful the believer is and that's why it's called sadaqa and the prophet said burhan it's a proof of what of tasdeeq your belief and your truthfulness and then the prophet salam he said was sabru the ah oh the the ah sabru mother the 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 this, Yanni, is more than Noor. Like if you have the the moon on the full night, that's Yanni Noor. And Allah mentioned this in the Quran. Yanni was Shamsu, Yanni was Kamru, Yanni Noor was Shamsu Diya. Naam, that the radiation, the illumination from the sun can't be compared to the full moon at nighttime. So here the Prophet mentioned this term of Diya showing if you have Sabr. Madama Shoksun fi Sabr Sawa can fi Lail on the Har Yes like a Tariq al Huda. If that person has Sabr by the term of illumination, whether he walks in night or, 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 or daytime, he will be guided. Meaning, no matter what the situation, if you have patience, Allah will grant you illumination. You'll walk through some trial or walk through some evil or walk through some land like you have illumination and you will not be, yani, from those people who would deviate by Allah's permission. And the Prophet said, yani, when Quran leka our lake, the Quran will be a, a, a witness for you. Will be a witness for you. But it can't be a witness for you if you're not uh, a companion of the Quran. What kind of Khalil, Nadiran, even if it be a little bit, but you understand it. You read it with Hadur al Qalb. Your heart is there when you read it and you practice it. Then it will be for you and not against you. And the last thing the Prophet he said, the people, yani nafsa, he will yani purchase himself. You will purchase your soul. The shaitan, he wants your soul. He wants your soul so that he can take that soul and you to hell in the end of the journey in this life. But Allah, he is the owner of your soul. And the way to get your soul from the shaitan, purchase it from Allah. How do you purchase your own soul that you don't own from the owner who is Allah? By doing righteous deeds. That's what Tabaraku wa Ta'ala said, for men and nasi may yeshri nafsi ibiti ga amarabati la. And from amongst some people, they will purchase their own soul from Allah by making pleasure and obedience to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala.
So this is a very pro profound hadith. I advise myself and all of you to go back, review this hadith, <clears throat> find explanations to yani, uh, explain more. And we ask Allah wa Ta'ala and Tajah al Quran, Hujjatun Lana Wala Alayna. We ask Allah to make the Quran for us and not against us. Wallahu Musta'an. Al Hadith al Rabi wal Ishroon. عن أبي ذلض رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فيما روى عن الله فيما روى عن الله عز وجل أنه قال يا عبادي إني حرمت إني حرمت ظلم على نفسي وجعلته بينكم محرما فلا تظالموا يا عبادي كلكم ضال إلا من هديته فاستهدوني أهدكم يا عبادي كلكم جائع إلا من أطعمته فاستطعموني أطعمكم يا عبادي كلكم عار إلا من كسوته فاستكسوني أكسكم يا عبادي إنكم تخطئون بالليل والنهار وأنا أغفر الذنوب جميعا فاستغفروني أغفر لكم يا عبادي إنكم لن تبلغوا ضري فتضروني ولن تبلغوا نفعي فتنف... فتنفعوني يا عبادي لو أن أولكم وآخركم وإنسكم وجنكم كانوا على أتقى قلب رجل واحد منكم ما زال ذلك في ملكي شيئا يا عبادي لو أن أولكم وآخركم وإنسكم وجنكم كانوا على أفتر قلب رجل واحد ما نقص ذلك من ملكي شيئا يا عبادي لو أن أولكم وآخركم وإنسكم وجنكم قاموا في صعيد واحد فسألوني فأعطيت كل إنسان مسألته ما نقص ذلك مما عندي إلا كما ينقص المخية إذا أدخل البحر يا عبادي إنما هي أعمالكم أحصيها لكم ثم أوفيكم إياها فمن وجد خيرا فليحمد الله ومن وجد غير ذلك فلا يلومن إلا نفسه رواه مسلم this hadith is found on page 247. Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu anhu, he said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned from that which he narrates from his Lord, the mighty, and sub the mighty and sublime, that he said, O my servants, I have restrained myself from oppression and I have made it prohibited amongst you, so do not oppress one another. O my servants, all of you lack guidance except whom I guide, so seek guidance from me and I shall guide you. O my servants, you are all hungry except whom I feed, so seek food from me, and I shall feed you. O oh, my servants, you are all naked except whom I clothe. Seek clothing from me, and I shall clothe you. O oh, my servants, you commit sin in the night and the day, and I shall all, I forgive all sins. So seek forgiveness from me, and I shall forgive you. O oh, my servants, you are all incapable of bringing harm to me such that you may harm me, and you are all incapable of benefiting me such that you may provide me benefit. O oh, my servants, were the first of you and the last of you, the men of you and the jinn of you, to be all as the heart, to be as the heart of the most pious one amongst you, that will not increase anything of my kingdom. O oh, my servants, were the first of you and the last of you, the men of you and the jinn of you, to be as the heart of the worst amongst you, that will not reduce anything from my kingdom. O oh, my servants, were the first of you and the last of you, the men of you and the jinn of you, to stand on a plain, and you all supplicate to me, and I grant everyone what he has asked. That will not reduce anything for what I have except what reduces from the sea if a needle is dipped in it. O oh, my servants, it is but your actions. I keep record of them for you, and then I will recompense you with it as it is due. So whoever finds good should give thanks and praise to Allah. And whoever finds other than that, let him blame no one but himself. Allah, Allah, Allah. Muslim. This is Hadith, Hadith Al-Azim, a tremendous Hadith. Allah, it's a book in itself. Scholars have written uh, pages, sometimes volumes, on the subject matter. Well, if you look at the beginning of the Hadith of Tabarak, Allah Ta'ala mentioned Abdul, yani oppression. And Imam Ashokani, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, La Sanani, Sanani, Imam Sanani, the great scholar of the Republic of Yemen from Sana'a. He mentioned about this, this hadith, the beginning of this hadith. He said, Allahu, and he said, that, uh, Allah, he said that zulam mustahil lillah. He said that zulam is, is something that Allah ta'ala, if he wanted to, he can do it because he has all of the power. And just imagine, when you have power, you have might, you have strength, the people who are under you or the people at your mercy, they are the ones that 
you can do whatever you want because you have the power. You have the ability. And they don't. They're masakin. They're, you know, weak. So Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, if he wanted to, yani, <clears throat> if he, yani, uh, had a, a, a reason to oppress, who could stop Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala from doing some oppression to his creation? So that's why Tabarak wa Ta'ala, many times in the Quran, he mentioned yani, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la yani, yani, ahad. He doesn't wrong anybody because he has the ability. And so this point, when you look at it, then some scholars said in opposition to this, that Allah can freely oppress if he wanted to because he's the mighty and he doesn't, then the person who has might, power, and status should think about that when they get ready to oppress. And many have said that this is yani ta'addik, yani lishirk. This is yani something that tantamount to making shirk because you're using your power, you're using your ability over those who are weak, as if you're Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala by oppressing them. So, this is something we should all think about when we talk about the sin of oppression or oppressing and the oppression that we do to one another. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. We ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala to make us not oppressive over one another, over yani, uh, each other, neither to ourselves, as a person can be oppressive to himself by disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu musta'an. <laughs> At the 30th hadith, inshallah, we're going to have an exam. Because some people look tired. The walls look very healthy right now. People holding the walls up. Lord, but, you know, so, see, you look a little bit more healthy than the wall. Wall doesn't need you, inshallah. Al hadith, al khamis wal ishroon, an abi dhalrin radiallahu anhu aydan an nas min ashabir rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قالوا للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يا رسول الله ذهب أهل الدبور بالأجور يصلون يصلون كما نصلي ويصومون كما نصوم ويتصدقون بفضول أموالهم قال أو ليس قد جعل الله لكم ما تصدقون إن بكل تسبيحة صدقة وكل تكبيرة صدقة وكل تحميدة صدقة وكل تحليلة صدقة وأمر بالمعروف صدقة ونحن عن ونحن عن منكر صدقة وفي بضع أحدكم صدقة قالوا يا رسول الله أيأتي أحدنا شهوته ويكون له فيها أجر قال أرأيتم لو وضعها في حرام أكان عليه وزر فكذلك إذا وضعها في في الحلال أكان له أجر Rawahu Muslim. This hadith is on page number 266. Naam. 25th hadith. The 25th hadith. Naam. On the authority of Abu Dhar, radiallahu anhu, he said, Some among the companions of Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Messenger of Allah, the wealthy have gotten tremendous rewards. They perform the prayers we do. They observe the fast as we do. And they give charity from their excess wealth. He said, hasn't Allah granted you what to give in charity? Certainly every tasbih saying subhanallah, meaning how perfect Allah is his charity. Every takbir saying Allahu Akbar, is the, Allah is the greatest is charity. Every tahmeed saying alhamdulillah. All praises for Allah is a charity. Every tahleel saying la ilaha illallah. Meaning there's no God worthy of worship except for Allah. It's charity. Commanding good is charity. Forbidding evil is charity. And you're cohabiting with your wife is charity. They said, oh, message of Allah, will anyone fulfill his desires and get rewarded from that? He said, if he were to fulfill it through uh, improper means, illicit means, a wrong way, would he have sinned? Likewise, if he fulfilled it through legitimate means, he would have the reward. Now, I mean, this hadith, the last part I want to focus on, the part that has to deal with getting a reward, ajr, for going to your wife. And the yani, wizard, the, the sin, yani, the, the, the bad mark on your heart, as Priscilla mentioned, every time the servant yani, does a good deed, nuktuta, nuktuta, bayba, he gets a white spot on his heart. And every time the person does a bad deed, nuktuta, madha, 
that's what gets a black spot يعني, on his heart. And so every time the spots get on the heart, if it adds up, then the ulama said this is what leads to a dead heart. It's like having cancer. If the heart is black, 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 all of these spots and sores and darkness, pretty soon the heart is going to be full and it's going to be dead. Likewise, if the heart is full of white spots, then it's going to be alive and healthy and full of iman and the heart will يعني, stay active in the obedience of Allah Ta'ala. So this part about if you go to your spouse, and this both this works both ways, by the way. If the woman goes to her husband, rather than going to a means that's haram, to have relations, she gets a reward. If the man goes to his wife, likewise, rather than going towards a means that's haram for relations between spouses, he gets a reward. But the opposite holds true. If the woman is sick, or she's yani, very tired, or she's yani, yani, uh, 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 having some type of uh, difficulty, yani, as women often have difficulty, then for the man to go to his wife, many of the ulama said he doesn't get a reward. He gets a, a sin. And Imam Muhammad ibn Salih Uthameen, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said this munkran haram. Munkran, something that's evil and haram. If the lady has mushakka, she has some difficulty, some pain, yani some issues with the uterus, some issues with severe menstrual cramp. And sometimes medicine won't take away, the, the heat and pad won't take away, you know, the, 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 the different things women go through, you know, with their body. Then for the man to think it's just a reward, it's just a reward, and she has to, you know, comply to him, then this will be the opposite of an edge. This will be the opposite of Rahmah. This will be the opposite of what's intended by this hadith, mutually working together and doing that which is halal and that which earns you a reward other than yani, the punishment of doing what's bad. So this is a reminder for us when we talk about the issues of living together and spousal relations. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his help. Ameen. Just for starting, just for starting. Batteries? No, no, I think it only goes for hours, so you have to stop it and restart. Hadith 25. Is that what it's supposed to be? نعم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحديث السادس والعشرون عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كل كل سلام من الناس عليه صدقة كل يوم تطلق تطلع فيه الشمس يعدل يعدل بين الاثنين صدقة ويعين الرجل في دابته فيحمله عليها عليها أو يرفع أو يرفع له عليها متاعه صدقة والكلمة الطيبة صدقة وبكل خطوة يمشيها إلى الصلاة صدقة ويميت الأذى عن الطريق صدقة رواه البخاري ومسلم The 26th hadith on authority of Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه قال Allah's messenger said every joint in a man has upon it a charity due every day the sun rises administering justice between any two is charity Assisting a man to, to mount his ride or helping him raise his, 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 his baggage upon his ride is charity. A nice <coughs> word is charity. And every step you take going to perform the prayer is charity. And removing harmful things from the way is charity. We're, we're collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Hmm. <coughs> 
الحديث السابع والعشرون عن نواس بن سمعان رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال البر حسن الخلق والإثم ما حاك في نفسك وكرهت أن يطلع عليه الناس رواه مسلم وعن وابص بن معب معبد رضي الله عنه قال أتيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال جئت تسأل عن البر قلت نعم فقال استفتي قلبك البر ما البر ما اطمأنت إليه النفس واطمأن إليه القلب والإثم ما حاك في النفس وتردد في الصدر وإن أفتاك الناس وأفتوك حديث حسن ورويناه في مسندي في مسندي الإمامين أحمد بن حنبل والدارمي رحمهم الله تعالى في بإسناد حسن the 27th hadith on authority of Nawaz bin Sam'an, radiallahu anhu, he said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, piety is noble character, but sin is what comes to your mind and you dislike that the people become aware of it. Collected by Muslim, Wabisa bin Ma'bad, radiallahu anhu, he said, I came to Allah's messenger and he said, you came to inquire about piety? I said, yes. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, search your mind. Piety is what the soul is at ease with, and the heart finds tranquility in. But sin is what occurs to the mind and brings hesitation in the heart, even when the people give you rulings telling you that you can do it. A Hassan Hadith. We were given the report from the Musnad of, of the two great scholars, Ahmed bin Hanbal and Adarami, with a Hassan chain of transmission. Alhamdulillah, salatu salam wa sallam wa ba'ath. This Hadith <clears throat> is a small Hadith, but wallahi again, Ibn Rajab, and he explained this hadith in his Jam Alum, <clears throat> which he added eight more hadith to the 42 Imam Noah, talk pretty lengthily on this issue. And that's because the part where the Prophet وسلم, mentioned the stuff is called consult your heart, ask your heart. And the part where the Prophet he mentioned يعني, that which يعني, it's something that doesn't sit well with you, you know, and you're back and forth. You think, I don't know, you know, maybe I will, maybe I won't, you know, well, you know, I, I think this is not always the case that this is wrong. This is not always the case when a person can't make up their mind or that which is in their heart is not something that's, you know, one way or another, it's fluctuating or it's back and forth. But the thing is that a, a sound heart, husband Selim, meaning the person that doesn't have a tainted any psychology, any, that person's psychology is the psychology of the Quran, meaning they think the way that they learn from Allah's book. They think the way that the Prophet وسلم, teaches in the authentic Sunnah. They think and accordance to what they learn from the author of the Sahaba, that the person who has a, a clean tainted, I mean, um, pardon me, a clean heart, it's not tainted, then that person, if that person is making salat and obeying Allah and, you know, making dhikr, then that's the type of heart the Prophet is talking about that you consult. Because a person who is the opposite of that, a person who's mujrin fajr, a person who's a yeah, and he's criminal to himself and against the religion. A person who's a outward doing bad and doesn't care type of individual, then of course when he consults his heart, he's going to get what's, you know, pleasure from his nafs, you know, and he'll think like, well, you know, my heart told me. And there's a, a book, Ibn Qayyim al Josia, he wrote, it's called Al La 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 Al Shibb al Islam Taymiyyah. He wrote called Al Furqan, Al Furqan. And this book, he mentions that. Some of the philosophers, they say, the greatest thing that was created by Allah, yani al aql is the intellect. So a'dham al khalq, khalq Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala, al aql yani the greatest thing that Allah created is the intellect. And this is a hadith, yani, uh, uh, they call it maldu'a, it's fabricated on the Prophet. But the philosophers, they use it. A lot of the people, yani intellectual, they use it because they want you to use your mind and your heart to override everything. So the prophet is not talking about that when he says consult your heart. He's talking about the heart that consults, yani uh, the person in part me consults their heart 
that's in line with the book of Allah Tabarakul wa Ta'ala. That's in line with the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu That's in line with stuff that we mentioned. The Prophet said, "In the halal bayyan, when the haram bayyan, it's clear, and that's something that could be haram, or it could be yani halal, something that's clear." And this is what the Prophet is talking about. So this is important uh, a benefit from this hadith. Don't think every time you have to make a decision or you're not sure that that's something blameworthy. And don't think every time you consult your heart, the answer you get back is what you go with. The Prophet is not talking about that. He's talking about in general with a sound heart, with a person who's connected with the Tabarakul wa Ta'ala, a person who has not been tainted in their heart and in that which they understand from life and the religion and Allah tabarakahu wa ta'ala knows best. Al-Hadith al-Thamu wa al-Ishroon An Abi Najih al-Irubab bin Sari radiallahu anhu qal wa'adhna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa'idhatan wajilat minha al-Qulub wa dharafat minha al-Uyun fa'kulna ya Rasulullah ka'annaha mawidhatu mawadji'in fa'awsina قال أوصيكم بتقوى الله والسمع والطاعة وإن تأمر عليكم عبد فإنه من يعيش منكم فسيرى اختلافا كثيرا فعليكم بسنة وسنة الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين عضوا عليها بالنواجد وإياكم ومحدثات الأمور فإن كل بدعة ضلالة رواه أبو داود والترمذي وقال حديث حسن صحيح The 28th hadith is on page 287 Abu Najih al-Irbad bin Sariya radiallahu anhu, he narrated that Allah's messenger once gave a sermon on account of which the hearts have feelings of fear and the eyes shed tears. So we said, O messenger of Allah, this is like a farewell sermon. So give us some advice. He said, I enjoin you to fear Allah, to listen and obey, even if a slave is made your leader. Even if a slave is made your leader. For whoever lives, some, whoever lives longest amongst you will see a great deal of differencing, dispute. So I hear to my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided khulafa after me. Hold on to it firmly with your molars. Beware of newly invented matters. For every innovation is a misguidance collected by Abu Dawood and a tirmidhi And he said a Hassan Sahih hadith. This hadith, Allah Mustan, can be a series of talks. Maybe the imam will make some program for the future, we can talk just about this hadith, the khutbah, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday, because it's a lot of benefit from this hadith. But what comes to mind, the beginning of the hadith and the <clears throat> middle of the hadith, where the Prophet mentioned about obeying the leaders. And sometimes we hear the stories about obeying the leaders and the accountability when you disobey the leader. But we don't hear too often about the accountability of the leader. What happens when the people disobey the leader is always mentioned. The consequence of going against the one who's in charge is always mentioned. But the consequence of the ruler going against Allah, against the commandment of Allah, which they go against the commandment of Allah and go in a way that's oppressive to those who are their citizens, is not mentioned too much. And one of the reasons, because people make it, if you talk about that, then this is the issue of takfir. Or you're a person who, takfir meaning you want to make the ruler a kafir so you can spill his blood in the Muslim society and like this with those people who are fanatics. But there's a real accountability for leadership. There's a real accountability when you're in charge, those people under your authority. So much so the Prophet said, kulukum ra'in. All of you who have a responsibility. It will be questioned about your responsibility. So this is one point. This hadith is uh, normally mentioned in one way, but there's another way that should be looked at. That is the responsibility, the accountability of the leaders. Now, the second thing the Prophet he mentioned his sunnah. There's something called sunnah, yani tartiyah, to leave off something which is considered sunnah. Many times we look at the sunnah and it's what we can get out of the deal, what we can do or what will get us a pass, you know, what what will make it okay. Well, so we say it's the sunnah. Ah, it's the sunnah. You know, so a person is going to go hang a lamb, a 200-pound lamb on the streets of Syracuse on the tree in a residential area and slaughter it. 
that you may get a fine, you may make some problems, you know, in the community, but you can't say, well, this is the Sunnah. You know, you have the Prophet وسلم, having yani, something to eat, but not eating it because it was not from his uh, um, food. Yani. What's this, the locust? This, uh, what's this? Yeah, huh? Mother? No. Type of lizard. Yeah, type of lizard. Yeah, I mean, and uh, also you have the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taking some things, you know, that he likes, such as honey and dates. So this is a sunnah. You know, sometimes when you don't like something, people say, Ahi, sunnah, sunnah, ahi, but that's a sunnah turkiyya, that you leave something that you don't like. This is from the sunnah as well. And also we have, yani, fikum, the issue of the Khulafa Rashidin. How many times have we heard the issue of praying with the hands on the chest and then raising after Simi Allahu liman Hamida, Imam al Albani, Rahimahullah Ta'ala said this bid'ah. And he made that judgment, you know. But later on, we learned that it was called Yani Ijtihadiyah. It was an issue of someone trying to explain the issue of the hadith that the Prophet mentioned about the hands, going back into the place that the person was yani, having his or her hands when they were standing. So it's not always when it's something that a scholar says is bid'ah or it's something that seems to be not from the sunnah that is bid'ah, like the issue of Uthman, two Juma'ah, I mean, pardon me, two Adhans and Juma'ah. Yes, to call the Adhan and Buhur in the Masjid, and then when the Imam gets on the Mimbar, to call it a second time, this is bid'ah, because we don't find the Prophet doing that in his time in the Masjid, nor the companions. But to go to a place if you have a, a soap, where the Muslims are outside vending, where they need to know it's time to come in, it's time to go get your shower, it's time to close down the soup because Juma is going to be in another 40 minutes. Then this is what Uthman established, and this is called Sunnah, Khulafa Rashidin. This is something that's not considered bid'ah, although some scholars try to say that because it's a Sunnah of the Khulafa, it's an action of the Khulafa, it's an ijtihad working to solve a problem based on your knowledge by the companions. And this is something that we can take from these hadith in our everyday life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in knowledge. Amen. Al-Hadith al-Tasi wal-Ishroon An Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu anhu qad Quntu ya Rasulullah akhbirni bi'amalin yudkhiluni al-janna wa yuba'iduni min al-na Qala laqad sa'alta an azim wa innahu layasirun ala man yassarahu Allah ta'ala alayhi تعبد الله لا تشرك به شيئا وتقيم الصلاة وتؤتي الزكاة وتصوم رمضان وتحج البيت ثم قال ألا أدلك على أبواب الخير الصوم جنة والصدقة تطفئ الخطيئة كما يطفئ الماء النار وصلاة الرجل من جوف الليل ثم تلا تتجافى جنوبهم عن المضاجع حتى بلغ يعملون ثم قال لا أخبرك برأس الأمر وعموده وذروة سنامه قلت بلا يا رسول الله قال رأس الأمر الإسلام وعموده الصلاة وذروة سنامه الجهاد ثم قال لا أخبرك بملاك ذلك كله قلت بلا يا رسول الله فأخذ بلسانه ثم قال كف عليك هذا قلت يا نبي الله وإنا لمؤاخذون بما نتكلم به فقال, فقال ثقلتك أمك يا فكرتك أمك وهل يكب الناس في النار على وجوههم أو على مناخرهم إلا حصائد ألسنتهم رواه الترمذي وقال حديث حسن صحيح The hadith number 29 on the authority of Mu'adh bin Jabal رضي الله عنه he said I said O oh Allah's messenger tell me about a deed by which I will gain entrance to paradise and distance me from the fire He said you have inquired about an important matter but what that which is easy for the one whom Allah makes it easy for. Worship Allah and do not join anything and, wor and worship with him. Establish the prayer, give the zakat, fast in the month of Ramadan and perform the pilgrimage to the house. Afterwards he said, should I guide you to the paths of goodness? Fasting is a fortress. Charity puts out sins. Ch charity wipes out the sins as the water extinguishes the fire. So does a man's prayer in the middle of the night. Then he recited the verse, their sides forsake their beds till they reach the part that they used to do. Afterward, he said, should I not inform you about the most important of all matters, its pillars and its peak? I said, yes, O messenger of Allah. He said, the most important of matters is Islam and its pillar is the prayer, is the prayer and its peak is jihad. And then he said, should I not tell you what by which you can attain all of this? 
I said, yes, O Allah's messenger, O, o Prophet of Allah. So he held his tongue mm. and he said, you should control this. So I said, O Allah's Prophet, will we be held responsible for what we say? Then he said, may your mother be bereaved of you. May your mother lose you, O Mu'ad. Are the people turned upside down on their faces? Or he said on their noses and dragged into the fire except by the consequences of their tongues? Collected by At-Tirmidhi who said a hadith that is Hassan Sahih. <laughs> This hadith is an indictment, Allah must die, against all of us. May Allah Taala to Allah forgive us. And if you look at this hadith in the beginning, he wanted to know something that will lead him to the Jannah, and something will keep him far away from the fire. So everything that the Prophet mentioned in this hadith is going to lead you to the Jannah, and it's going to keep you away from the fire. One of the things that comes to mind, he said, a soul mother, Jundah. Now, so most of the time we hear when it's talking about Soma al Arafah, Soma al Ashura, Soma Kadha, Wakadha, and Hatta Ramadan, even the fasting Ramadan, we hear the people say that the fasting itself is something that will remove the minor sins. The fasting is something that will remove the minor sins. And the major sins, you have to make toba. You have to stop. You have to feel bad about it. You have to not go back to him and ask Allah his forgiveness. Imam Muhammad Mukhtar Shanqiti, when he talked about he, this issue, he said that the issue of the hadith where the Prophet mentioned that salat, yani salawatu khamsa wa juma ila juma'a. Ramadan, ila Ramadan, wa fi lafdin, wa umara, ila madha umara. Prophet said the five daily prayer, meaning what comes between each salat. Juma to Juma, what comes from one week to the next. Ramadan to Ramadan, what comes from one Ramadan to the next year. And Umara, from the time you make the minor Hajj Umara and you make it the second time, the Prophet said, You kefira ankum siyatiku mata. It does two need. When you avoid, when you leave off the major sins. Imam Shankiti, he said, the example of that hadith, and the hadith, for example, the fasting for Arafat, what is the fast of Arafah? The Prophet said, Yani kefir asinatul maadi wa baqi. The previous year and the upcoming year. The, the, the example of t today, al Ashura, Mahagra, al Mahagram. Prophet says, Sin maadi wa baqi. It removes the past year sins. So the Shaykh said that aslu fil fiqh, Yani al Muqayyid, Jubaka fil Muqayyid, wal Mutlaq, Jubaka al Mutlaq. That the general stays general. This is the origin in fiqh. And the restricted stays restricted. You can't take that restricted hadith and say every fast only removes the minor sins because the major sins only get removed by topa. Allah can remove your sins because of the action. Like fasting. Here the Prophet said, the Salm Huh? It's a chill. Anybody understands the, the, the shield means it's going to keep you from the hellfire, then this means it has to remove all sins. Because you can't go to paradise with major sins and you just have minor sins wiped away. It doesn't work like that. And the Prophet in the hadith where he said the five salat, yani in Juma the Juma, the Sheikh he said, Hadha yani kifara to bayni. Hadha kifara bayni. Meaning, the sins or remove minor sins, just making it from Duhu to Asr. You didn't pray yet. Just the fact you live from Duhu to Asr, minor sins are removed. Juma, next week Juma, just the fact you woke up and you made it on that day, Juma, you're alive, your minor sins are removed. You have to make Toba for the major sins, but just making it to Ramadan, your minor sins are removed. Just making it to the Mamlaka to make Umrah, your minor sins are removed. But as it relates to the action itself, Salat, the action itself, 
Juma, the action itself, fasting Ramadan, the action itself, Umrah, they wipe away all of your sins. Nah, they wipe away all of your sins. And what brings that to mind is this hadith, the prophet said, a soul majunda. Yeah, it, 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 it can't be a shield and it only wipes away the minor sins. So this is a benefit that we have. Although many scholars, Jamur Ulama, majority of them say, yeah, and you have to make toba. And this is not saying you can play with major sins. It's just telling you the mercy of Allah, how he has put in the issue of fasting or in the issue of just his mercy. A lady was forgiven and one now race said, that she never did anything. Never did any good deed. But the thing that got her forgiven and entered the Jannah, she gave some water to a dog. And she was a prostitute. Just from that action. She didn't fast. She didn't make salat. A person will come on the day of judgment. Allah will ask him, did you do these sins? Yeah, my Lord. Did you do these sins? Yeah, my Lord. Do you do these sins? Yeah, my Lord. Allah just forgive them out of his mercy. So this hadith has a lot of benefit. One of them, that the generality of fasting removes all sin, whether it's Ramadan or other than Ramadan. And this yani, is one of the benefits of this hadith that comes to mind. Wallahu musta'an. We ask Allah to forgive us and enter us under his mercy. Amen. جزاكم الله خيرا وفيكم دار طيب so we reached to the 30th hadith and as promised we have a small test inshallah عفو بيقول ها نعم the first hadith we started off with today is the hadith of of Hassan bin Ali ibn Abi Talib and what hadith is that and what number for the people that need to go back nah. because we got to flip the pages back. It's on page, no, nah, it's page uh, in the Arabic edition. I'm not sure in the English. Maybe somebody could catch what it is in the English edition. But in the Arabic, Arabic edition, it's on page 63. And it's the hadith of Al-Hassan ibn Ali. Hadith. The 11th hadith. The hadith of Hassan ibn Ali. Radiallahu anhu ma. The question is, What should you, what should you make yourself, no, a better question. What is it that you should be busy with? Or what should you do when you have a situation that's maybe not very clear to you what you should do in the situation? It, it could be wrong, it could be right. Specifically, like the Sheikh mentioned, let's talk about what he specifically said in regards to maybe someone's honor. You know, because this is what, you know, people are very comfortable with, whether it's doubtful or not. So, uh, I'm going to jump on that bandwagon, bandwagon and eat that flesh too. Right? Uh, it's doubtful. What should you be doing? If, let's say, I, let's say, Billah, someone comes to you and they say, hey, you know, man, let me tell you what happened about, you don't really know if it's true or not. Then you go, what should you be doing in this situation? Should you spread it? Should you, what? Investigate it? Should you leave it? You, why not investigate it? Don't concern you. Allah Akbar. Not your, Allah didn't make you the police. Mm -hmm. <laughs> didn't set you up to it's be not the... your business. Leave it alone. Allah didn't make you that. It's not your, your job, right? When they said call that, call that. No, they, they, what did she say? One of them said something. Leave it, she said, know. leave it alone. Uh, like nah. So well, leave it alone. Nah. So the reality, again, goes back to what? Because it's a big problem today. You know, the flesh of the Muslim is is taken lightly with the people. So, if a person comes to you with some nice information, right, some juicy stuff, what should you do? Should you go and, you know, should we have to double check the situation? Or does it doesn't concern me? Let it be. Remember that. That's a principle that Hassan Ali, he memorized this from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was a young man, learned that principle. Does it concern him? Leave it alone. You save time like this too. A lot of time is saved in this manner. The next hadith. And I put some Hassan didn't say submit to Yani al Khali. He said hadith to shows the importance. He memorized. He know it's with him. Nah. Yeah. He he made the point that he preserved this, and one of the reasons that the ulama mentioned that he said hadith to is because he was very young when the Prophet passed away. So he wanted to let make sure the people knew that he didn't get this from another companion. 
that he heard this and memorized it directly from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Tayyib. The hadith number 12. From the good of a person's Islam, what should they be doing? If you want your Islam to be good, what should you be busy with? No, nah, but from the hadith. Yes, leaving behind, but there's a direct way to say it. Be busy with your business. Be busy, be busy with your business. Right? Because you wanna that makes your Islam good. Why? Because you protect yourself from falling into talking about something you don't have to, and you save yourself from being involved in these things as well. What should a Muslim keep safe from other Muslims? What are the most important things that a Muslim should keep safe from another Muslim? And what else? In his hands. His tongue's in now, his hands. I don't hand. want nobody saying that who'll be punching people. Come on, brother. Be sincere. <laughs> Cursing people out. The tongue's in the hands. <laughs> what about the feet? Do you have to keep your feet free from the Muslim? He said the hand. So can you kick the Muslim? No? Ishmael <laughs> Kullu? Everything. It, 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 it includes everything. The third narration uh, that we want to talk about, the 13th hadith, the hadith of Anas ibn Malik, the 13th hadith. What should you love for your brother or sister? The good. Jazakumullah khair. You should love the good for them. Hadith number 14. What is a very important benefit? Sheikh Okachi mentioned, and he transmitted it from Sheikh Muhammad bin Farooq, that, Hafizullah Ta'ala, what should we consider, and specifically for ourselves, right? Because a lot of this, sometimes we think about other people. What should we look at it as the person who sees it as permissible to kill another Muslim? What, should, what, what do we see that as? That a person, he, this is a type of disbelief that he has made permissible, believed it to be permissible, that I can kill a Muslim when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the life of a Muslim to be sacred. Stop. What are the three things that a Muslim can have their life taking legally in a Muslim country for? With, with being proven evidence, after evidence. And I'm after evidence. <laughs> adultery, what is adultery? Illegal intercourse, do you? Illegal intercourse? Yourself. Illegal intercourse with what? I'm married. Not just married. If you were married ever. Yeah. If you were ever married before. So there's a difference. It's not just, okay, you were married. Adultery amongst the kufar is that. And that's the difference between us two. That the kufar, they say that, you know, it's adultery. While if you're married. You commit zina while married. But in or Islam. Or to somebody who is married. Or to somebody who is married. But in Islam. Zina committed by a person who ever was married, even if you were married 20 years ago, and you're unmarried for 20 years, and you decide to go in this way. The benefit from it, the ulama said, because the one who was married before, he knows how to get married again. So he doesn't have an excuse. You were married before, you know how you know. You were married before, you know how to get married. Stop playing games. You know how the honey tastes. He was in the honey store. No. You know, <laughs> yeah. It's not so, a stranger to it. Yarif. Some no. So, the, what's the other two? Defend yourself? A life for a life. What did he say? Defend yourself. What's the other one? Defend yourself. No, no, he, he, was, he was mistaken. Leaving Islam. So, Mufatakul Jama'ah is talking about leaving the group, the body of the Muslims. The Muslims, and you're now with the Christians. You left. You separated from them. Or just separated. You know, somebody's, you know, it's not the same as like when some people say, I'm not deening. Right. It's a lot. Uh, I'm not on my dean right now. You know, this is a weakness. Maybe they're not practicing properly, but they're not saying clearly that, you know, I left the body of the Muslims, you know, where you can say, oh, you're a Kafir. Yeah, you know, inshallah may Allah guide them. You know, this person is hoping that they can return back to Islam, but they have some weakness at that moment in time. These are the ones that we should struggle with the most for, inshallah. The hadith number 15. The Prophet Sallallahu he mentioned three things that we should do. Hadith number 15, three things that we should do if we believe in Allah, meaning that we want to have complete belief in Allah. 
what are those three things that we should be conscious to do as much as possible? Speak good or be silent. Honor your guest. And honor your neighbor. So what happens if you have a person who's a guest and your neighbor? <laughs> Double honor. Double? My best thing. Now, hadith number 16. Hadith number 16. What is one of the consequences that can happen to a person from talking and speaking out of anger? May Allah protect us. What was one of the consequences that a person can receive or be afflicted with for speaking out of anger? No. That he may lose his spot in Jannah. It might cost him his spot in Jannah. May Allah protect us. Hold on. Hold on. Allah most time. May Allah protect us from that too. Amen. Especially during this COVID-19. Hadith number 16. 17, Afwan. Hadith number 17. What is, Shaykh Wakashi mentioned a very important benefit in this hadith that a lot of people don't realize when they mention this hadith. Who remembers what it was? What's the hadith? Hadith number 17, the hadith of uh, in Allah, Qasab al mm. That Allah has decreed or Allah has ordained, obligated upon you to do everything in the best way. No, that wasn't the benefit though, but that's in the hadith. Uh, something about that, but there's something specific about that. Indiscriminate killing, being unjust. Nah, I'm just like, well, okay. Oh, you said that they, they, you said that they are not always mentioned, you know, to. to the people that's in power. No, that's the other hadith. This one, he answered this one is that people oh, indiscriminately that's killing, that's being unjust to their subjects when Allah commanded them to be kind to them. So doing the opposite of what Allah has commanded. A hadith number 18, the hadith of doing good deeds, following up good deeds, excuse me, following up an evil deed with a bad, excuse me, following up a bad deed. Good, a bad deed with a good one so that it'll wipe it away. So what should that remind us about? He mentioned a benefit here in regards to what a person should not do. We know what we should do. What should we not do? We got to preserve our good deeds. So we shouldn't try to, you know, when we do a good deed, say, man, I got enough in the bank. Let me go do some sins real quick. No, subhanAllah. So, you know, the command is follow up a good deed, follow up a bad deed with a good one. Again? Follow up a, <laughs> follow up a good deed. deed. A a bad deed. Follow up a bad deed with a good deed. Okay. Follow up America, a, it's not, become ox. <laughs> that's true. Follow up a bad deed with a good deed. So the yeah. point, a very important, this is a very important benefit. Nowhere in this hadith does it mention what you should do with a bad deed because we should be staying away from that anyway. We should be staying away from that anyway. So if we do do a, I mean, you know, if we do do a good deed, a bad deed, we have to follow up immediately with a good deed. But what we do with our good deeds, the opposite, is that we have to preserve them. We should, it's you not know, mention, it's not mentioned what to do with, with the good, good deed. deed. Nah. Not the bad deed. Almost, uh, good deed. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> what should we do with the good deeds is preserve them, business no, as much as possible. That's our life, our lifeline. No. And also in that hadith, he mentioned that most people enter to paradise because of what? Good character, right? I mean, we, we need this, inshallah. Good character. Al Hadith 19, the 19th Hadith. The Hadith of Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu ma. Someone bring me any benefit from this Hadith. This is the answer to what you just said what to do with your good deeds. Ihtadallah. Nah. Keep them in front of you. The you, limits you, of Allah. Yeah, Fadaka, yeah. <laughs> MashaAllah. Yeah, give me another benefit. Someone else, another benefit. <laughs> don't, don't fear the people. Don't fear the people. Fear Allah. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Only ask Allah. <laughs> we have the tarif uh, uh, A little. Uh, I'll tell you a benefit from here. Is that one thing that we have to pay attention to? We could take an example that when we say don't fear the people, nah, this is 100% true. But it doesn't mean don't take precautions, right? Similarly, like in the time of, you know, like the pandemic times, you know, we're not going to go extreme, but it doesn't mean that you're going to go into, you know, a place where you know someone is sick 
and go give him a hug. You know, they say, I don't fear nothing but Allah. Of course, you know, but you got to take precautions. Similarly, in the times that we're in now, you know, some of the mashaykh, they say that, you know, especially for us people, all of us Muslims, because all of, I look around here, none of us look white, honestly. I'm just saying realistically. Whether you're from, wherever you're from, you look colored, right? Shouldn't be outside too late at night these days. Realistically speaking, you know, we see, you know, what's happening. <laughs> nah, we see what's happening today with, you know, people being killed, you know, indiscriminately by the police. These, you don't put yourself in a situation, say, I don't fear nothing but Allah. And then next thing you know, we're praying your janazah because you, you know, you're out late at night in a place where you shouldn't be. And then the police think you're somebody else. And then they do what they are doing at these times. So, you know, we don't fear Allah, of course, but we take our precautions. Don't fear the people. He was so happy, he said, you're you my servant, I'm your Lord. So Allah, so we understand that best. Like we do that best sway, a shay, and he الخوف لا الله ما عليه مينشن الخوف الرضي بسيد قبض حديث ابن عباس الميتين حديث إفد الله يحفظك يعني يعني keep Allah in front of you and or or preserve the limits of Allah because you can't protect it preserve Allah it means the limits of Allah what Allah legislated treated as if it's halal لكن ده هذا هذا حديث and treated يعني ده حرام is حرام so this حديث الرضي بسيد يعني uh, uh, don't don't fear nobody but Allah. And the ulama they said khauf aqsam. Yani khauf, fear in Arabic khauf. They said it's different types. One of them is yani khauf tabi'i, a natural fear. If you hear a real loud noise, right now people may jump without yani trying to jump because this is natural, you see. Or if somebody says somebody's outside with a machine gun, he just spraying people. Somebody's heart's going to start beating fast. It's going to think like, you know, lock the door. This is natural, yani, fear. But normally when we say we don't fear nobody but Allah, this means, yani, that you're not going to uh, allow somebody to make you afraid to where you leave the obligation set by Allah. You don't allow somebody to fear you to where you're not going to do what Allah commanded you to do. But even that, there's an exception to the, the rule. Yani Allah tabarakul wa ta'ala, he mentioned Allah, yani, it doesn't come to my mind. The ayat about I don't know that. The, when you when you yeah, say the statement, Yani Allah just mentioned, Yani I can't remember that, but it's talking about if someone does something that they dislike in their heart, but in the in their heart, Yani uh, is is Yani iman, Yani. So Yani, imagine someone has a gun to your head. It tells you leave Islam, or Yani or or Yani uh, uh, say that Yani Buddha is your Lord. It depends. Somebody might say, listen, I'm not saying nothing. You just have to kill me. And he's at peace with that. Somebody else might flash in front of his face, my family, or my wife, or my house, or my children, or my job. I need more time to pray. He might say, okay, okay, okay. But if it has Iman yani, in his heart, Allah Taala mentioned, he's in his heart, is firm with Iman, then Allah is going to give him a pass. And this is tied to khawf. That's what the Prophet said yani, uh, 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 in the hadith of Ibn Majah. He said, Inna Allah tajawaza li an ummati. Yani, madha an nusyan. What you do, you forget. What akhta, what you do on mistake, mean you mean to do right, but you err as a human. And then he said, madha, amastukru alay. What you were forced into doing. But you dislike it, but you do it because you have to. So this issue of khawf, fear, we'll have to put it in context, you know, because somebody said, man, I don't feel nothing but Allah. Then he go out there and he get beat down. You know what I'm saying? And somebody say, oh, wow, you know, that brother, he was brave. No, that brother was foolish. You know, the Prophet ﷺ took precaution. Why do you think he traveled in the middle of the night with, with, with Abu, uh, 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 
Abu Bakr Sadiq making hitra. He didn't just say, listen, I'm, I'm going to leave when I get ready. Come on, y'all. No. They snuck. Why do you think they was in the cave? You know, Allah said, Thani yani al 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 the other one that was in the in the cave with you. La tahsan in Allah ma'ana. Ma'ana. Don't be afraid. Allah is with us. You know, don't worry. Yeah, so there's a context here. And that's why I said this is a little bit extreme. That's Allah yahdina. Ila sabila rashad to guide us to a straight path. Jazakum Allah khayyam. The 20th hadith. Ida lam tastahyi fasna ma shit. What does this mean? No, I don't translate it. Oh. What does it mean? This is talking about uh, show, uh, showing a, a blameworthiness of a person. That the one who's doing whatever he wants, he has no shyness. Nah. From the lady, what does this mean? If a person has no shame, what does this mean? Is it telling you to do what you want? If you don't, If you don't feel bad about it, go ahead and do it. You don't feel bad? Go ahead. Is that what this is? Is this an allowance to go and do as you please? If you don't feel shy about it? Firstly, what is shyness? I just sit in the corner. I don't talk much. I don't eat. I don't say nothing. That's shyness. No, nah, that's a very good question too now. What's shyness? <laughs> From sins? A fear of doing something that which is not befitting. Which is not proper. Right? You smell nasty. It includes what's not proper that people don't like. Most people don't understand when you mention al haya they think it's just tied to Allah. It's supposed to al-Hayah, sure, but Iman. It's something that is part of Iman, to have shyness. But when you look at the explanation of the hadith about that type of shyness, they also mention yani Maru'ah. No. Yani the, what the people dislike, yani Uf and Maru'ah, what, maru'a, what the people dislike. So, you know, if, if it's something, you say it's not from the religion. But people as a custom, they don't like it. They're going to be upset. You know, you're going to make a problem. You should avoid it. This also from yani, the, the context of Yani Islam Tastahi. You see? Nah. Allah Musta'an. But you're still asking the question. Now, so the question goes back to if you if you don't feel shy about it, is this hadith giving you an allowance to do what you please? They have questions? Or? If they have questions, we can ask the question after we finish the review. I'm still, I'm waiting. There might be answers, not questions. Um, That's quite, this question is for the ladies. If a person does not feel shy, can he do what he wants? Oh, yeah. What they say? They said no. So the, the, so the hadith is saying, yani, if them tastahi, yani, if you don't have any shyness, yani, then this means you will do something, Yani, that you like. It means and only thing will prevent you from doing something that's wrong is shyness before Allah or sometimes before the people. Yeah, this showing the, the reality of doing stuff. Nah. Tayyib, al hadith, al hadith 21, the 21st hadith. Tell me something about Islam. Oh, wow. I'm asking you, tell me something about Islam. Because the best answer is the answer of the Prophet, right? So I'm asking you, tell me something about, advise me with something about Islam that I can hold on to. Tell me something. What does that mean? That's, you know, translation. What are, what are you telling me to do? Believe in Allah and then do what? Be persistent. Don't give up. Keep going forward. Steadfast. Yeah, but, you know, steadfast is a broad word that some people don't really understand. So, but keep going forward, right? Don't give up. Don't take a break today. Today I'm going to take a day off. And once you say you believe in Allah, you got to keep going forward. You know, it, you know, just a small, you know, note like when Heraclitus asked the question, do they stop believing after they believe? He said no. And he said that's what happens when true iman enters into, mixes with the heart of a person. So once you say you believe, you're not going to stop. And that's something that we have to pay attention to also. That when true iman enters into a person's heart, they're not going to give it up and then go back. They're going to keep going forward, bismillah. So that's what we have to try to always be and try to strive to, you know, always taste that good iman in our heart so we don't want to give up. 
We don't want to take a break, take a hiatus, take a semester off. That doesn't happen in Islam. It shouldn't happen in Islam. It shouldn't happen yeah. in Islam. But some people, they do it. They have a part-time Islam. No, I'm listening. Like a part-time lover. No. So this means one day at a time. Hakata? No, take one day one at a time. At a time. Take one day at a time. Yeah. Keep going forward. Stop. Keep going forward. Tell you, the Hadith 23. The Hadith number 23. Oh, 22? No, we no. Why is this? Yeah, stop for the law. Yeah, the Hadith number 22. Thank you. What does it mean by? I treat the halal as halal, and I treat the haram as haram. What does that mean? I'm about to make a big problem around here. <laughs> what does that mean? But why? Because this, this is, this is, you know, the explanation is an important point. Because a person can stay away from something that's haram because they're afraid of their parents. Someone can stay away from haram because they're afraid of what people are going to say. The point in the hadith is not that, though. But there's a point that we're missing. Mm. Still missing the point. Believing that it's haram. You stayed away from it, not just because, you know, some haram stuff, who likes to do it really? Like, who wants to go kill someone? Nobody. Right? That's just like something that's bad to do, period. You know, stealing is bad to do. Zina is just bad to do. So you might stay away from just because you're like, man, that's just bad. But staying away from it, believing that this is haram. I'm not going to do it because I know Allah does not like this and Allah said I cannot do this. That's the difference. When it makes it, that's what makes it an ibadah. Because there's some kafirs that stay away from some bad stuff, right? They're going to, you know? So then what about the halal? You do it. Believe in that Allah. No, but the halal is not always something that, you know, but you do it knowing that Allah has not prohibited you from doing it. Tayyib, hadith 23. What does it mean by Sheikh, he mentioned two types of cleanliness. What are they? Hand sanitizer. <laughs> and what's the inward cleanliness? What is it? The aqeed. The belief. The belief. Right? A lot of times we say the heart, but what are we talking about the heart? The first thing we have to be clean from is what? Shirk. Right? Tell you. Al Hadith 24. The hadith of the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying he restrained himself and prevented himself from doing dhul. Mm. What should this say for us? What are we? What about the person who oppresses the people unjustly? You know, he, uh, he goes around and just, you know, he's oppressing the people, using his strength and his might and his power against the people. What is this? What is this considered? What, what the Shaykh, he mentioned that this can be considered a type of what? Sure, you're trying to make yourself at a level where you shouldn't be at. Hadith. Oh, you are me, huh? Nah, you said I'm gonna give life and death. I'm gonna kill people because you know that's what I'm gonna do. I have that ability. Al Hadith 25. What are some things that you can do if you don't have a lot of money? You don't have any money to give in sadaqah. What are some things that you can do? Tasbih. What else? Nice words. Especially think about this for you young people who might not have no money, right? And you say, man, I can't give any sadaqah. Right? What should you be doing? Give as much tasbih. Can make it much at the cow, doing kind actions, and joining the good and forbidding the evil. You don't have to be the imam or the sheikh to join the good and forbid the evil. That's something that everyone has to be doing. It's sadaqah. What other type of sadaqah? It's important that we understand this last part too, because you know, when we say there's no shyness in Islam, we have to also know the time that we're in, right? I mean, there's no shyness in seeking knowledge. We know that the time that we're in that things are more known than it was maybe 10, 20, 30 years ago. Maybe some things that we wouldn't expect an eight-year-old to know 20 years ago, today they know better than a 30-year-old. Reality. So the Prophet ﷺ gave a very good example of something here, right? You want a relationship. You want love. Some of you guys say you're chasing love, right? You want something like that, right? How do you, what's the way that you can find this and get rewarded for it? 
through marriage, through the right way. The same way that if you try to find love, Allah, Allah, Allah. if you try to find love in a wrong way, you get what? Mm. So the 26th hadith Tell me something Okay, the 27th hadith. What type of heart is the one that the Prophet Sallallahu here is addressing when he says to ask your heart? Is he asking, you know, what type of heart is he, who is he talking about? Who is he addressing this to? The what? The, what type of person is this? The person who is you know, upon good and it's the karma. What about the person who, you know, he's trying to decide if he's going to go to the club tonight? Should he ask his heart? And he was just at the club last night too, matter of fact. Should he ask his heart? His heart is, you know, where it's at. So, you know, this person's not going to say, nah, when you ask, he don't do that. He said, nah, I ask my heart. And my heart, like, how would I put it? Somebody might say this. that's the jib of kalbahu thumma. يعني يتحبه وقتله واحد في 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 المكان. We have some stories like this where nah. people said, you know, my heart told me, but I went anyway, and then something bad happened. Nah. I should have listened to my heart. أحيان حتى الكفار أحيان قد يكون. That sometimes a person might ask their heart, and you know, you know, the the amazing point mentioned here too is when we say ask the heart, right? People say, what do you mean by ask the heart? Realistically, in Islam, they said that the aql, the seat of the aql, is the heart. So you know when you get me to do something bad sometimes or something that's real, you feel it weird. You don't feel it in your brain. You literally feel it in your chest. Whoa, so how I shouldn't have did that. You know, that's a you know a actual tangible proof aside from, of course, what Allah has mentioned in the Quran and what the ulama have spoken about. But then when you ask your heart, your heart is actually that seat. Tayyip. Hadith 28. What is that? What is it that we need to do to save ourselves from falling into differing? A lot of differing. Too much differing. What is it that we need to do? Yes and no. That's not enough. Because everyone says they follow the Sunnah. The Shia say they follow the Sunnah. Right? You're going to see them this week, today, matter of fact, on their day, doing some crazy stuff, and they say they follow the Sunnah. Right? So what else do you have to do? No? No? Follow the way of the Khulafa al-Rashidin. Amin qabla dhalik, yani, al-mawafiqu ma'a, yani, umara, aw man, yani, yani, fokakum, yani, min mas'uliya. Also, you know, listening to and staying in obedience to those who have leadership. I mean, given leadership over you. That, you know, in Islam, there's no rebellious people, you know, that, you know, I'm just going to do it my way. I'm just going to do it my way. No. We got we to gotta fall in line. We have nidhan. Hadith 29. What is the thing that causes most people to fall into destruction? Allah. How do you protect your tongue? 
If we know this, the tongue, but how do we protect it? Subhanallah. La hawla wa la How do we protect it? Nah. Nah. Whoever's quiet. But what do we? Sometimes to the extent that you know, some of the salaf, it was known that they would actually grab their tongue. Got to stop it, right? Sometimes you got that thing is just going. It doesn't. You know, they says the muscle that doesn't tire. Mm. Right? <laughs> you got to stop it sometimes. Hadith number thirty. Let's go. Let's do it, inshallah. الحديث number 30 عن أبي ثعلب الخشني جرثم بن ناشر رضي الله عنه عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن الله عز وجل فرض فرائض فلا تضيعوها وحد حدودا فلا تعتدوها وحظم أشياء فلا تنتهكوها وسكت عن أشياء رحمة لكم غير نسيان فلا تبحثوا عنها حديث حسن وهو دار قطر وغيره الثرثي الحديث on authority of Abu Ta'laba al-Khushani al-Jurthum bin Nashir radiallahu anhu he narrated that Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said certainly Allah ta'ala has laid down the obligations so do not neglect them and has given limits so do not exceed them he has also prohibited some things so do not violate them he was silent over some things out of mercy for you not due to forgetfulness do not delve into them nah. الحديث 31 عن أبي عن أبي العباس سهل بن سعد الساعدي رضي الله عنه قال جاء رجل إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله دلني على عمل إذا عملته أحبني الله وأحبني الناس فقال ازهد في الدنيا يحبك الله وازهد فيما عند الناس يحبك يحبك الناس حديث حسن رواه ابن ماجه وغيره بأسانيد بأسانيد حسنة this is the hadith, it's on page 313. Abu al-Abbas, Sahal ibn Sa'ad al-Sa'idi, radiallahu anhu, he said, a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, O oh Allah's messenger, guide me to a deed which if I act upon it, Allah will love me and the people will love me. So Allah's messenger said, don't be, don't be engrossed with the pleasures of this world and Allah will love you. And don't look forward to that which is in the hands of the people, and the people will love you. A Hassan hadith collected by Ibn Imaj and others with a Hassan chain of narrations. Al hadith al Thani with al Athun. An Abi Sa'id, Sa'id ibn Malik ibn Sinan al Khudri, radiallahu anhu, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a call, la darara wa la dirara. Hadithun Hassan, wahu ibn Imaj, wa dara khutni, wa gayruhuma, musnadan. The hadith is hadith number 32. On the authority of Abu Sa'id, Sa'id ibn Malik ibn Sinan al-Khudri radiallahu anhu, who said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there should be no harming or reciprocation of harm. A Hassan hadith collected by Ibn Majah, a Dar al-Qutni, and others in a Musnad form, and Malik and Muwatta in his Mursal form from Amr ibn Yahya, from his father, from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he did not mention Abu Sa'id, and has changed which strengthened one another. Al-Hadith, Al-Thalif with Al-Athun, عن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لو يعطى الناس بدعواهم لدعا رجال أموال قوم ودماءهم لكن البينة على على المدعي واليمين على المن أنكر حديث حسن وها البيهقي وغيره هكذا وبعده في الصحيحين the thirty third hadith ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما he said that the message of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said if the people were to be granted their claims, people would claim the wealth of other people and their blood. But the proof, the burden of the proof, lies on the one who makes the claim. And an oath must be taken by the one who rejects that claim. A Hassan hadith collected by Al-Bayhaqi and others, and a part of it is in the Su Sahih compilations. Al-Hadith al wa Talathun. عن أبي سعيد الخضري رضي الله عنه سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من رأى منكم منكرا فليغيره بيده فإن لم يستطع فبلسانه 
فإن لم يستطع فبقلبه وذلك أضعف الإيمان رواه مسلم The 34th hadith on the authority of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri رضي الله عنه He said, I heard Allah's messenger saying Whoever amongst you that sees an evil should correct it with his hand If he is unable, then with his tongue And if he is unable, then with his heart And that is the weakest level of faith الحديث الخامس والثلاثون عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تحاسدوا ولا تناجشوا ولا تباغضوا ولا تدابروا ولا يبع بعضكم على بيع بعض وكونوا عباد الله إخوانا المسلم أخ المسلم لا يظلمه ولا يغضله ولا يكذبه ولا يحقره التقوى ها هنا ويشير إلى صدره ثلاث مرار بحسب امرئ من الشر أن يحقر أخاه مسلم كل مسلم على المسلم حرام دمه وماله وعرضه رواه مسلم The 35th hadith on authority of Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه he said that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Do not be envious of one another. Do not outbid one another. Do not hate one another. Don't hate on one Don't hate on each other. That's what that means. Because sometimes we don't understand that meaning. Don't hate one another. Don't hate on each other. All right? Do not keep it away from one another. Nor, and, do not, and no one should interfere in the transaction of another. You should be slaves of Allah, brothers to one another. A Muslim is a brother of another Muslim. He should not be unjust to him, nor desert him, nor lie to him, nor despise him. Piety is here, and he pointed to his chest three times. It is sufficient for a Muslim as a sin that he holds his brother Muslim in contempt. All of the things of the Muslim are, are, are haram for another Muslim, forbidden for another Muslim, his blood, his wealth, and his honor. No? Mm -hmm. This hadith, men of the ulama, they said that... <clears throat> All of those things the Prophet he mentioned, the beginning of the hadith, they are part of the thing that the Prophet mentioned in the end of the hadith. And that is, Kullu Muslim ala Muslim haram. Every Muslim should be to the other Muslim haram. What does haram here mean? When something is haram to you, haram, that means you don't want anybody else to have it. You don't want anybody else to violate it. So here, Salam is saying, the relationship between the Muslim is that the Muslim should be sacred to the other Muslim. He doesn't want anybody to harm that Muslim. Thus, he doesn't want to harm that Muslim. That Muslim doesn't want to harm his Muslim or her Muslim brother or sister. And so, Salam, he mentioned, he summarized the whole hadith by saying the Muslim is sacred to the other Muslim. Don't violate yani, the ear of the Muslim, the honor of the Muslim. But before that, he said, Ma'adha, ma'adahu damahu wa iru. His wealth, his blood, and his honor. And many of the ulama, they said, for this reason, many of the Salaf used to say, yani, be aware of doing something that may cause hostility between you and another person. Be aware of something that will cause all of those things the Prophet he mentioned in the beginning of the hadith because those are the things that break the relationship between the Muslim. Those are the things that end up violating either the wealth, the blood, or the honor of the Muslim. Allah Muslim. All right, we're going to break this law, actually. Tayyip, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Bakhi, yani sabah hadith. Nah. Thank you for good participation. We're going to take... take uh, the break for Salat, inshallah, is 5.11 now. We're going to come back and continue at 5.30. And by now you know when we say 5.30, we mean 5.30. So what's expected also is that the students should be here at what time? 5.28. You know, you should always be here before the Sheikh gets there. That's from bad adab for the students to come into the class late after the Sheikh is there. Bad adab. So we're trying to, you know, correct these type of things because we know that the best are the people, the, the people who enter an agenda the most, but people with good manners. So from good manners, that you should be sitting here present waiting for the teacher to come. Tayyip? So 5.30, we're going to resume. We have seven hadith left, inshallah. And then after that, we're going to begin with Shama'il Muhammadiyah.
باذن الله تعالى سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك Now